Vernon. You've all seen one of these before, haven't you? A sealant dispenser. Well, I have the inventor standing right next to me here, Bernard Fruitin. This has been an incredible success for you, hasn't it? Indeed it has, yes. We've done very well with it. We have sold over 30 million of these in the last few years, and uh, that has done very well for the company. Why did you get into this area in the first place, then? I'm an inventor, that's what I do for a living, and many years ago, one of my many inventions were licensed to a company down in London who did oils, but they also sold sealant, and they said, could you put sealant into an aerosol? And I said, I could, I would be back within a fortnight, and it took five years and 400,000 pounds. A little bit longer than you expected, and then. it's always a little bit longer. <laughs> we'll get some tips from you a little bit later on in the program, but first of all, take us through some of the components that are in here. How does it work? Well, the can itself is an aluminium extruded can and there are two pistons. So this is the basis of one of the patents. There are two pistons which are pushed inside. And in between the two pistons, there is a liquid seal. So as the two pistons are locked together, mm. the liquid seal comes out to form an, an O-ring. And the propellant, which is the product that you use to push the, the, the actual product out, goes in here and the product, whatever it is, cream cheese or sealant or any thick viscous sealant will go in here. And as you open the valve, you expose more of the holes and you can control the flow rate by the amount you turn the lever. So as you turn the lever, you'll see this nozzle comes up, the valve lifts out, and you have yourself a control mechanism for controlling the flow from the pistons which slide all the way to the top, giving you 100% extrusion. So it really opened up a, a multitude of, of different markets for you when you came up with the idea? Well, yes, except that as an inventor, I move from invention to invention. And I tend not to develop the invention commercially mm. by employing salespeople. So what we do is we sell intellectual property. This has been an incredible success for you and for your company. It took three years to sign that deal. But it was worth it at the end of the day because it is the appropriate way for an inventor with a first invention to get into the marketplace. Well, you've got some brilliant ideas and some brilliant tips for our inventors that we're going to squeeze out of you later on. Now, I've got to go. And now we have our largest invention of the day, a revolutionary life raft. So please welcome its inventor, Peter Ingalls, who will be pitching to Donald Crawford. Peter has absolute confidence in his life raft, although he's never tested it in rough seas. People like Donald's are something quite new to me. Um, uh, I've never, never heard of people like this before who, who basically sort of specialise in linking people to the manufacturer. He'll be pitching to Donald Crawford. Donald knows what bad conditions at sea can be like. He wants to know that this raft could withstand them. Peter, why a life raft? Well, really, this, uh, this project was part of, uh, it was my sort of final year at university. It was quite important for me because it was like kind of my finishing uh, uh, project to pick something that hadn't had a lot of uh, design activity in, in recent years. We sent Susie off to test it out. Let's see how she got on. Tell me, Adrian, when you woke up this morning in your warm and cosy bed, did you feel lucky? Because I am now in the Clyde, testing out Pete's new life raft. Now, here's the problem. Traditionally, that's what we're used to. But it's quite difficult, go on chaps, to get into, as you'll see. Come on, use your muscles. You see, if you were really old, or really little, or very, very tired from treading water, that would be a serious problem, wouldn't it? Whereas, over here, this is Pete's new invention. Guys, take it away. And what you can't see is underneath the water, there's a step, which is the outer case of the life raft, which is just standing and step in. Simple. And as you can see, it works. Any room for this one? It's pretty impressive to me. Peter, what's unique about this? Well, life the thing raft? that's unique about this raft, there's, there's two major points about this particular raft. Um, the two, the two major features that make it different is this, um, this sort of keel section to the, at the bottom here and then the open-ended rear um, uh, at the back. Upon inflation, this keel section here floods with water. Once flooded with water, it creates a stiff a keel for the life raft with a combination of, of the floor and the keel section. Now, what this extra water does is 
in the unlikely event that it might get toppled over by a wave. It gives it ballast, does it? It creates a really high centre of gravity, so when it's upside down, it just brings it back round and, and it will right the raft when fully, fully laden with occupants. It'll so how do you get the water in there? The way that works is, uh, if you can see from the rear here, yeah. uh, what you have is a floor section which is a series of cylinders. Now obviously when these cylinders are deflated, the, the wall section of those cylinders is a lot longer than when they're inflated. If you can see these kind of ribs along the bottom, that's actually this case. This is the life raft when it's all so that's in, in its casing. Okay. And, and what happens is, is, if you can imagine that casing is like this, as it inflates, it pops open, and then all those ribs there snap apart and create the, these rib sections along the keel. Peter's raft is clever because of the multifunctional nature of its components. The container that holds it folds open to become the hull of the raft. Pockets inside the hull are designed to fill with water upon inflation and act as ballast, keeping the raft upright and stable. The canopy is aerodynamically shaped so that the raft swings into wind because of the resistance in the water from this drogue, creating an area that's shielded from the rough weather and has a step for improved access. How big is this when it's packaged like that, when it's on board ship? Okay then, this is the package as it would look when, um, when stowed away. So essentially, uh, a conventional package for a 12-man raft would be about twice as high. So it's in a container? Yes. Almost yes. like a conventional raft would be? Exactly the same. Once the life raft's inflated, this yeah. will create resistance in the water. And as the wind's blowing from this direction, it will create enough resistance to have the life raft slowly drift round so the nose points into wind. So this creates a sheltered entry area. So that this area at the back is protected from wind, spray off breaking waves, rain, etc. So, so you've got a calm environment in which to enter the raft as so well. So what do you think? Um, I think the principle is absolutely right. I think it is good to have a step there. But I would like to know how far you've gone with an actual test. We, we've, uh, we've gone forward with the testing of the, the whole entry, you know, comparing this entry to a standard raft, yeah. as we saw with Susie. And also, we're getting ready for the, the roll testing to test the uh, uh, self-writing capabilities yes. of the raft. Well, Donald, with your knowledge of the sea, and of business, what's your verdict? Bearing in mind that you've got to uh, achieve border trade approval, you've got to achieve naval approval and, and probably air sea rescue yeah. uh, approval because there's a situation there where if it falls it may be droppable from aircraft into situations. I would be very happy to join with you to do that. That's a serious project. Thank you very much, Peter. I wasn't expecting him to be uh, quite, quite so impressed by it, but uh, no, at the end he seemed to have a big grin on his face and uh, he's very interested and uh, no, it's been really well worth it.